Angela Perry with Meeks and Realty, and today we are down at River House Studio Gallery over at 308 Spadina Crescent West. Absolutely stunning location and such a cool spot for you to come and visit. And we are actually meeting Cecilia today, who is the owner, the artist, kind of the life behind this spot. So thank you so much. So tell me a little bit about you, your history. <sighs> well, way back in 1970, I was in grade 12. You can do the math. <laughs> and I was advised that I was always doodling and that I should go take some art classes. So I took my first art class. Started out as a commercial artist. I designed signs. Most of all the signs that I designed in Saskatoon are now gone. But anyway, so I started painting, doing art classes, and I worked for neon products. I worked for Mar Vion and New Image Advertising. They're all sign companies and then I worked for a t-shirt company and New Image Advertising was gifts like hats and jackets. So I've done a lot of logos, a lot of design work. What the design would look like on your building. Okay. So yes. my architecture is really good perspective wise. In 1988 I started taking watercolor classes. A friend of mine paid for my first class at the Mendel and I fell in love with watercolor. Started taking classes out of town, mostly Edmonton, Regina. International artists would put on these instruction and it'd be anywhere from three to five days. So I started doing that and then my friends said, teach us what you're learning. So I started instructing and I've never really thought of myself as a teacher or instructor. That's good label, but I really just share my knowledge and my classes are all really well based on technique. You're going to learn how to paint, how to handle the medium. We work from patterns, everybody is the same picture so that they're on the same learning curve. And then from there on, you advance as much as you are personally able to. And I've had some people that have been with me since 1994 keep oh, coming back right. every year. I teach September to January, 12 weeks. And then we do a winter class for another 12 weeks. Spring is short, depends on when May long weekend is. I do not teach after <laughs> May long weekend. And in the summer, I do a lot of my own art that you'll see in the gallery. So how did we get to River House? Yes, tell me about that. I was divorced, raising kids on my own, three wonderful boys. Somewhere along the line, I met somebody else and we were looking for a home that was ours not mine and so he worked at Mitchell's Intercon Maple Leaf it's had so many names the meat packers <laughs> so he worked there and he drove past and there was a sign on this property for sale and he came home that day and said oh found the perfect property for you it's a 1908 house it's a fixer upper I've stripped all the woodwork I'm working on the last floor in the kitchen so it's a working environment it's a studio gallery you come and you learning classes in a great wonderful home that we tried to get back to the original as much as possible so when he found this place with all the windows it was perfect so I moved out of my basement, moved into Riversdale, and we've been here for over 20 years, 1996. Got married right here in this living room, been here 20 years. I absolutely love it, right on the riverbank. We got lucky, and we stole it because nobody wanted to fix her up. Or it's 120 years old or something. Yeah, and in the studio gallery, yeah. like you said, behind us is a gallery strictly your work. Yes. This is not for sale right behind us. There's other art in here that is. But tell me a little bit about this. This kind of shows your journey yes. through the years. Well, because they took all those classes, I started at Emma Lake when they used to have the art colony out there. I went, I think it was two weeks. I did 15 paintings in two weeks because I just wanted to paint. I painted every day. And so this one behind you, that was I did at Emma Lake. That was way back, way back. It says 1992. So I did that and then progressed. It took negative space, I took some abstract. This is my one of my very first paintings. It was my parents' cabin resort. And if you look at it, watercolor is supposed to be transparent. That one isn't. I did not know what I was doing, but it's a building on this. And then I took this because it's about lace and reflection. This is salt, you can feel salt on. If you're lucky, it'll do that. And then this is some of the stuff I teach. This is another class I took from a fellow when he was in Edmonton. And I thought he was nuts painting skies lime green, but I thought it would certainly work. So this big one at the top, it is a big wave. And everybody loves it so much. I'm actually, you'll see when you walk through, I'm working on a big one. So I'm working on some for sale. So it's not only my own works to show my progress. But if you like something, I'll say, well, I'll paint them like that for you. Oh, smart. It gives you an idea of my different styles. And so this watercolor and acrylic, 
I do alcohol ink. So this is an ink over here, which is a new technique. And this was one that was from an art class that's cranberry flats. Okay. And that's an acrylic class. So you do work photographs. So it gives you an idea of what you might accomplish. This I took a class. It was the best class from a fellow named was Open Zabu. I found out he was going to be in Edmonton. And when I found out he was teaching a class, I had no money. I had three kids, no money. I don't know how I came up with the $400 to take that class. But I had the money to take the class. So that was the result of the class I took from him. I could tell you what I learned in each one. It's a really good example of my journey. That's, that's what it's called, is my journey. The other thing I want to mention, I've labeled the house, the house of murals, because at the center circle, making it down the ramp, there was all those murals. The murals down that ramp, the ones I painted with the group and some of it on my own, are on the wall back there. They're outside on the house. So there's murals on all three sides of the house. I've even got a piece on the garage back at that. And I've got murals on the house because when COVID hit, I painted all my doors. Took the doors off, painted all my doors. And then I painted the mural in the bathroom. Where did the murals go from the center circle and make? They're all in the house. <laughs> Come and have a tour. You know, and what you said there, coming have a tour is just it because it's not just inside here. So in a traditional art gallery, you've got to look outside, go around, check the front and around in the yard. It's absolutely stunning. The garden and the yards, my friend calls it my art installation. I'm a creative person. I have to be creating. I get very grouchy when I'm not creating. I have to be always creating something. Even when the kids were little, it was birthday cakes. They were over the top because I needed to have that creative outlook. And my mission statement is to bring joy into the world through my art. So if you look at a piece and you're happy, I've done my job. Whether you buy it or not is actually secondary to me. It's nice to sell. And then I'll take a picture of you in the painting because I want to remember where the painting went to its new home. Oh, that's beautiful. Yeah. yeah. Well, I think that must affect your teaching and everything else because when that is your mission and you've got that kind of a love and respect for it, it just it comes through. I like to transport that joy. Like my advanced students, when they left, I gave them a mission for the summer. I said, okay, you're coming back in fall. They've been with me so long, it's a challenge to find something new to teach them. So I said, okay, what we haven't done is we haven't looked at a flower from the side. We're always looking down at the top. And you see those pictures in the other stores, the cheaper acrylic ones that are under the store. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, my goal is to do home sense art for that market. Yeah. And some of them, when you look at them, you can see they're looking up into the trees. And I thought, that's so cool. That's an interesting point of view. So I told them, when you're looking at your flower gardens this summer, or buildings, whatever, I want you to look at it straight on so that you see a profile picture. How does a leaf turn? How do you paint that to make it look three-dimensional? You're going to be there goal this fall. So I'm also taking pictures because I need some reference myself. So when I walk through the gardens, I'm always looking, how does the light fall on the flower? I like to take it when there's shadows and light on it. No even light, just morning light or evening light. Shadows is a big, huge thing in art. If you want to have one hint, Today, the best hint would be is study shadows, incorporate shadows into your work. It will make your stuff go exponentially off the mark. That's a great tip. And my stuff stands out for itself in a lot of cases is because I concentrate on the shadow and the light source. So this one here is a good example because you can see there's a sunlit area here and then the shadows in here. So the play of light in here makes it different than this, which doesn't have any play of light. That's 20 years old. This painting, this is one year old. Big change yes. in what I've learned. Well, I love it because you're still growing and learning and finding yeah. ways to teach that to others. Yes. So that's fabulous. Are there any other details that you'd like to touch on that we've maybe missed? I am not open on Fridays. I'm not open Fridays or Sunday. I'm open the rest of the week, 10 to 5 or by appointment. So if you can't make it before 5, I live here. So you just have to let me know that you would like to view the gallery after sales. Best phone for an appointment so I know you're coming. That makes sense for sure. If you're in the area, taking a walk in the park, come and stop in and check everything out. It's absolutely gorgeous. Thank you so much for watching and be sure to stop in and check them out.